night shifters who witness paranormal activities, what happened? I worked at a 7-Eleven. One night I kept hearing what sounded like a little girl crying, but the store was completely empty. Whenever I'd go to the area where I thought it was coming from, I'd hear it from somewhere else. I hope somebody was messing with me but I'm not sure. A lab building where I once worked was the site of a murder-suicide. We didn't have shifts per se, but I had to work late one night autoclaving equipment for the next day's experiment. The autoclave room is right next to the lab where the event took place. I hadn't seen anyone else in the building. After I started the load, I was about to leave the room when I heard a crash outside. I immediately opened the door and saw that all the contents of a table in the hallway had been pushed to the floor. Water bottles, a packet of papers, pens, etc. Since I was right by the door at the time, I would have seen or heard someone running away. It was against protocol to leave things in the autoclave overnight, so I had to stay an hour and a half to get them out, but nothing else happened. I left the stuff on the floor, though. Didn't want a repeat of that. I used to work at a 24-hour subway. Well one day I was doing the dishes, and my coworker was cleaning the toaster oven and bread oven. Out of nowhere, around 3.30 a.m., I heard our door chime go off. Out of habit I say welcome to subway as I turn the corner. Nobody there. Coworker gone. I thought okay, maybe he hopped the counter and went for a cigarette outside as he did from time to time. Heading back to the sink to finish the dishes, I hear the door chime again. Nobody. Checked the bathrooms. Nobody. What, the, hell. I ignore the dishes, and stand at the front counter, eyeing the doors. Couple minutes later, my coworker comes through the back door where we get our deliveries where did you go? I asked him, turning towards the back door area. To take out the trash, he replies. Door chime. He does the same thing as me welcome to Subway, turns corner to see nobody there but this time the door was wide open. Our doors are weighted to where they'll close on their own if you let go of them. Door stayed open for a couple minutes as we stared. Then suddenly slammed. Not a windy night, and our doors wouldn't even stay open like that on the windiest of days. Have no idea what caused this, or why it happened on that particular night, but after I got a different job I was told it never happened again. Told my boss about the incident and we all looked at the cameras. Nobody could explain it. Here is the one my wife likes to tell. She is a nurse and for a couple of years she was working night shift in the palliative care unit, which is the comfort care slash end of life unit. Patients in that unit are expected to die, or to be sent home or to a care home to die. Anyways, those rooms also had a radio, and according to her it happened a few times that a radio suddenly turned on, and within an hour or so a patient would pass on. One rather busy night, the radio turned on and my wife went into the room, stared into the darkness and said cut that out. I don't have time for this shit and the radio suddenly snapped off. No patient died during the rest of her shift, but one passed away shortly after she clocked out. I work the front gate at a military installation. The night shift is super dull and quiet where I am at. For a while I noticed this dark green old Ford Bronco that would roll up. When I would stand out the gate shack, the car would do a 180 and leave. This happened about two to three times until I finally caught the license plate before it turned. I ran the numbers to my supervisor. He asked me if I was sure. I said I'm 100% certain. He tells me it couldn't be because the numbers led to a vehicle crash report that involved the exact same vehicle and plate number to which the driver had died and the vehicle and the vehicle was totaled. That shit made me want to switch to days. I worked at a movie store in college. I was closing one night and just kind of doing a final walk through. I kept hearing what sounded like movie cases shuffling. I looked around thinking maybe someone had came in last minute although I didn't hear the bell ring for when someone enters the store. Didn't see anyone. Then I hear what sounds like a movie fall off a shelf in the kids section. I go over and there's a movie laying on the ground and I shit you not it was Casper. Used to work at IHOP. A cook before my time got shot and died during robbery. I would always hear someone in the kitchen such as the spatulas clanking but nobody would be in the kitchen. Once I saw a black figure in the back figured it was the cook, when I went outside to the front of the restaurant, the cook was sitting outside smoking. There was no current orders either. Other co-workers experienced some stories. One of them said she felt pushed but I can't speak on what I didn't see. I worked in a mine in Northern Ontario. 
There was a death on the 4200 level a couple years previous to the incident. It was a normal day underground like any other. We were rehabbing old working that had collapsed. 4200 level was big, the drifts were 6 times 6 feet, but go on for kilometers in every direction. It was about midnight when we saw the mine rescue team with security rushing down the drift. Naturally we dropped what we were doing and followed to see if we could help. We arrived to a guy who was as pale as a ghost, he didn't look hurt, but he was shaking uncontrollably. Mine rescue approached him and he wouldn't have it. He would scream, and not just any scream, it was terrifying hearing the screams, like a person so consumed with fear, it had a tone to it that you wouldn't imagine could come from a person. Eventually he just stopped screaming and just sat there, awake but non-responsive. By now it was 3.30 am and our shift was over. We couldn't leave him down there. We managed to get him on a stretcher that we could carry out. On our way out he kept saying the devil is on 42. Over and over again. About two years later, another incident report was read to us, the exact same thing, exactly the same spot, but a different person. I don't believe they saw the devil, but it is always in the back of my mind when I'm on 42. Work in one of the major ERs in my city is HCA. One of my many tasks is post-mortem care on patients who die in our care. One night at around 2 I was called to the room of an older patient who was palliative had passed and the family had finished their goodbyes. So I went in to start providing care, this usually means removing any tubes, wires, and monitors from the patient, giving them a bed bath, removing any valuables from the body to give to the family, putting them in a gown and shroud. I like to talk to my patients even if they have passed as it puts me at ease, and shows respect to them. I explain my actions and talk them through what I'm doing because even though they have passed they are still my patient. While I was proceeding with the bed bath of the patient out of nowhere I felt like I was being watched and then I felt a hand on my shoulder and a man's voice tell me thank you, the hand remained for a moment while I stood there frozen and all the feelings stopped and the room felt empty. There were no other nurses or staff in the area at the time, just me. I like to believe that the patient I was providing care for was thankful for my explanations and me continuing to talk to them through their care. I was working at a gas station at like 3 a.m. one night. A car pulled into the pump, guy got out and started pumping, and then the car and dude just, vanished. I was looking right at it, and it just popped out of existence. I told my boss the next day and she turned white as a sheet. She'd seen the same thing, same exact description, same car, same pump, same guy. I was firmly against the idea of paranormal activity prior to working in an old folks home. You always felt watched. Always. Even when not in view of the camera. But that was the tip of the iceberg. Several times while I was working, things would fly off the walls even though it was unprovoked. I'm talking hand sanitizer containers that flew 15 feet from the wall it was on, cups that were stationary on the counter and all of a sudden flew across the room, and clipboards that just happened to all fall off the walls at once, even though they were across the room from each other. Nothing is as unsettling as Bill in 209. Bill lived in this room while he was a tenant. While someone was visiting, they stayed in room 209. The visitor came downstairs, said that Bill had come into his room, and said don't worry it's just Bill. While he was in the shower, and then asked who Bill was. We explained that there was no one who lived or worked there named Bill. A couple days later, the same visitor was cleaning out records for the care center, where they worked. As they were doing so, they found that a resident named Bill had lived in room 209. When they told us this story, we all heard a knock on the window and turned to look at it. As we did so, clipboards and bulletin boards flew off the wall on the opposite wall. We've decided that Bill is friendly, but likes attention. He's cool. A patient in one of our hospital rooms kept talking about spirits and demons. She was discharged a week later. The next guy who was admitted to that bed told me he sees spirits, and a big black lab was lying next to the bed, my black lab died a couple years ago. Then he said he's very in touch with the spirit world and laughed and said, I see dead people. Thanks for tuning in to Reddit Streams. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more videos. Share your views in the comments below.